Welcome back to another edition of the Sal Greco Show. And on this edition, it's going to be almost like a rapid fire edition. We're going to hit a couple of topics. We have an illegal immigrant raping a 13 year old in New York City. Absolutely disgraceful. We have Seattle, Washington depleted in their police force, hiring illegal immigrants to become cops. We have the illustrious mayor of New York City, the nightlife mayor, who likes to sample the product, as he likes to say. Eric Adams. Campaign financial disclosures are a disaster. On top of the fact that he is, as we know, partying all the time. Which leads us to the final topic. His favorite restaurant and everybody's uh, favorite restaurant, apparently, in the New York City Police Department Conso Frito in the Bronx and the latest on that. That's coming up on this edition of the Sal Greco Show. All right, let's get started here. Before we do anything else, folks, if you could please hit the like, share, and subscribe button. That's on YouTube. On Rumble, you hit the Rumble button. Spread the message out with this episode. Share the message out with all these episodes because we're all here to spread information. Not misinformation, unlike some people out there do. This is the truth, okay? So we're going to start off this episode. By reviewing this, I mean, this is absolutely disgraceful right here. Ecuadorian migrant who allegedly raped 13-year-old New York City girl said he recorded the attack in sickening confession. There was an incident in the Queens where a 13-year-old girl was tied up and raped. And it was a manhunt for a couple of days. It happened, I believe, over the weekend, I believe uh, a week or two ago. And right away, the suspect, <laughs> there were people already running out there saying it has to be an illegal immigrant. And of course, there's been a barrage of incidents all over the country. And what, you know, I'm deeming it a migrant crime wave. And I believe others are as well. We have a migrant crime wave in the country of the United States right now. And this country is uh, having multiple incidents of illegal immigrants running around and doing crazy things because what's happening here is when president biden opened the borders and said we are in business for everybody doesn't vet anyone there is there's no procedures because they took away the trump policies of remain in mexico where these people were getting vetted, and if they were seeking asylum, they had to stay in Mexico while seeking asylum until they saw a judge here. They're just walking in, everybody's seeking asylum, apparently, and they stay in America, and then they give them a court date eventually at some point to see a judge maybe 10, 20 years down the road, and then they commit crimes because you're letting in third world country people, gangbangers, felons. This is who you're letting in. I understand there's a portion of people that really are seeking asylum. I understand there's real people that come here to work. Of course, you do have to do this in a legal fashion, not just walk over the border and say, hi, I'm here, help me. So I understand you got to have a heart in the situation, but not necessarily when <laughs> there's gangbangers out there because you need to protect yourself. Public safety is always number one. Sorry if anybody that disagrees, but that's actually the number one issue, public safety. I mean, you don't have a country or a life to look at if you got to worry about walking outside and getting picked up and raped by some animal or killed or, you know, any other various crimes that are going on. So here's the story. The Ecuadorian migrant charged with raping a 13-year-old girl he bound and gagged in a Queens Park, told cops he recorded the attack during a sickening tape confession, prosecutors alleged Wednesday. The chilling admission by Christian Giovanni Ingalanda. Uh, and remember, anybody with three names, I mean, in, in history and is a, is a criminal is just like on another level. You know, it's always Lee Harvey Oswald, uh, 
Sirhan Sirhan, you know, the, uh, the, the individual that shot Robert Kennedy. It's always, uh, you know, brings up a question. Uh, so he's 25, broke his silence in an otherwise hushed court hearing in which he was arraigned on charges of rape, predatory, sexual assault, kidnapping, and a raft of other felonies from the shocking June 13 attack in Casino Park. Besides the fact that he entered the country illegally, which should be the number one charge, actually. Quote, I was nervous at first and then comfortable and recorded it. This man is a sick, sick individual. Uh, I, I hope he gets deported. But, of course, that's another story in New York City, right? They, they, they technically never do that stuff. So the community, the community coming forward and finding this guy is something special. This reminds me of the Night Stalker. If you remember back in Los Angeles, way back in the 80s, a, a thing his name is Ramirez. This gentleman was wanted for doing all kinds of heinous crimes. And the community was the one that finally caught him. And the police were able to arrest him. And he eventually was uh, indicted, put in prison. He was found guilty. He was on death row for a while. And then eventually he got sick and died, I believe, uh, not too long ago in prison. And uh, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. This reminds me of that case because the community came out, knew where this gentleman had been, how he likes to hang out recognized who he was and they came out and held him for the police who there was a massive manhunt and again when you let an untold amount of illegal aliens show up to this country it's very hard to find out who's who because they're unvetted and this guy was slipping through to the system as you know he he you know there's no fingerprints there's nothing on file for this guy so luckily they were able to uh put this puzzle together i applaud the citizens this is not only a failure on the federal government by Joe Biden, the president, and his administration for just letting every, everybody in. It doesn't matter who it is. But Mayor Eric Adams, who invites these illegal immigrants to New York City because, of course, with Eric, there's nothing he does. When he, when he says contract, we say kickback. That's what we're saying because Eric is the king of the kickback. So by letting these migrants come in, Eric is getting some kind of kickback somewhere. They stay at these hotels. That's where this gentleman will be found that he was doing something in New York City. I'm sure you'll hear this as the weeks uh, go by. Eric has a lot to do with this because he lets them in. He wants to give them, I guess he wants to make them lifeguards. I mean, this is a major problem in New York City. Then we also have... This district attorney, which is Melinda Katz, she's actually doing what she's supposed to be doing as the Queens district attorney. But Alvin Bragg in Manhattan, where many incidents are occurring of illegal immigrants committing crimes. Is he prosecuting anyone? I just think he likes to prosecute people with the name Trump because we don't see or hear of anything else that he's doing. Uh, also, you know, the state legislation and the city council. They need to change laws, bail reform laws, because it's very hard to hold somebody who commits a crime. This, in this instance, they finally use the fact that he is a flight risk. He is. He's an illegal immigrant. He's a flight risk. So by saying that, they are to be held in prison. So other instances of criminals committing crimes, they can't hold them because there's really... Nothing to hold them on due to these bail reform laws. So the state legislation and the city council have another burden on them that they have not done nothing to correct this problem. They have a migrant crime wave. There's another kind of crime wave going on where there's just anything goes in New York City. And I know Eric Adams likes to say that New York City is not surviving, it's thriving. Trust me, it is anything but that. On to the next story. And this is, I can't believe this. Illegal immigrant police could soon fill beleaguered ranks of Blue City. The Seattle Police Department has lost over 700 officers in five years. And, and now listen, uh, this, is, like, this is a problem everywhere. Police have been beleaguered all over this country. They are being attacked by radical 
Marxist, leftist people, I don't know what you want to call them, whether they're district attorneys, activists, they want to live in a lawless society. The police, whether you like them or not, are your last bastion of a defense between chaos and civility. Whether you like them or not, you respect the fact that when they're there, they're supposed to be in the middle. I understand it. There's going to be corruption problems, as we're going to point out in a little bit when I uh, discuss this wonderful nightclub that the NYPD loves to hang out at. Uh, there's going to be other instances that maybe cops go a little too far. I understand that. In every tree, there's always a rotten apple. But to throw a blanket and say all oh, cops are bad or whatever, that's insane. Because that's far from the truth. And uh, I don't believe that police are inherently racist or whatever. Whatever new uh, uh, acronym, uh, new... Uh, uh, idea, whatever it is they're going to try to throw on police officers in this country, because listen, a very high majority, a super majority of cops go in every day like I did when I was on the job, and they're just trying to do their job. They want to do well by their constituents and their communities. But some of these Marxists and some of these people out there, I'm going to call them Marxists because if you want to call a revolution where you just want to set the world on fire, that's what you are. You're an anarchist, and we see a lot of that, especially right now with all these uh, pro-Palestine uh, protests that are you know, setting New York City uh, ablaze every single night and other uh, jurisdictions where I don't really know what you're marching for because to punch out windows and do all kinds of chaos, it, it, it does nothing to your movement. I don't even know what the movement is other than screaming things and then trying to break things. Seems like it's almost staged, don't you think? Quote, the Seattle Police Department is not accepting applications from DACA recipients, end quote, reads a post last week on the Seattle Police Department's LinkedIn page. Deferred action for child arrivals DACA recipients, oftentimes known as, quote, dreamers, unquote, a close quote, are migrants who entered the country illegally as minors and have since taken advantage of the DACA policy. An Obama-era program that allows qualifying migrants the ability to defer action on deportation and gain work authorization in the United States. This is a complete disaster. Now listen, like I said, when we're talking about illegals and the uh, undocumented uh, crime wave or the migrant crime wave that is uh, spreading all over the, the country here. Now there's DACA recipients or people waiting for their paperwork or lesson. If you came here legally and you did everything that you're trying to do legally, then by all means, that is what the American dream is all about. But uh, these children here came to this country illegally. I don't know if they even are a citizen right now. And this program, DACA, has had issues because the Supreme Court has ruled, I believe, against it. It is uh, an unconstitutional uh, executive order that was by Barack Obama, who has definitely set this country back decades with his policies and his rhetoric himself. So uh, this program, DACA, and anything that has to do with it should be looked at. I believe President Trump in his term was trying to uh, look into this, but of course we all know what happened. His... Uh, Four years was should have been eight years, got cut short. So I guess uh, this isn't an election issue yet. I haven't heard anything about what they're going to do with DACA. But obviously, this is coming up again. When you have police departments hiring illegals, that, I mean, again, it contradicts the, it contradicts the law. An illegal immigrant cannot even own a firearm. I know in Illinois and Chicago, I heard stories, they, they're in court okay in that, but saying that the United States citizen, a legal taxpaying citizen, doesn't have a right to bear arms, but the illegal immigrant does. So I, you see what's going on. This is, again, a Marxist ideology. These people are anarchists. They just want to see the world burn, and they want to okay all these fast-track, all these criminals, and a criminal mindset, basically. So if illegals can carry guns, you bet that that incident in New York City that we just covered, that'll be spreading all over the place because that's just a, 
small contingent of the criminals that have been let out of their jail cells in all these uh, foreign countries and sent to America. Fidel Castro did that many years ago with the Mariolitos when they sent them to Florida back in the uh, 80s. And, and they're doing it again. The Venezuelans. The, uh, now you got this guy from Ecuador. He's got tattoos. You can tell he's part of some gang. This is what you're going to see. Do you want this showing up to your house as a cop? Because I'm going to tell you, if you think cops are corrupt or you're one of those people that think there's a lot of corruption going on, and it may be, there's truth to that, wait till illegal immigrants are in the police department because you're not even going to realize who is coming to your house and what gang or what silent, you know, they're going to be a silent member of the police department acting like they're such a great guy and they're really working for gangs. Because you know what? Now they have access to intel. They're going to leak it out. And you know what? You never know if they're just going to show up and maybe they end up doing something crazy because they're having a gun and they could just show up, take out an informant, take out people that are actually trying to stop these uh, migrant uh, gangs from taking over the country. Because now you have them in your police force. This is a problem that nobody's want. you know, they, they, they're not even bringing up. This is a disaster. And Seattle, which is a blue city, and has fallen from, I mean, it used to be a, it used to be a great city. And by all accounts, people I spoke to about it loved Seattle, said Seattle was great. I mean, it was just a, 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 a city on the West Coast that people like to visit. No longer people want to visit or live there. Because uh, Washington State as a whole has its own issues. So that, used, that actually is, a, a, when I used to be a police officer, many of the uh, undocumenteds that I encountered and I pulled over, they always had a Washington State ID. But yet they were not citizens of this country. And they very recently had just walked past the border. So that seems to be a sanctuary state. So you bring the problems to yourselves, basically. I would see who is in your legislator, the legislation there, who's your legislators, who's your governor, city council in Seattle. You need to uh, make demands on them, start uh, protesting in the street, maybe saying you don't want this. Also, I don't know, vote different maybe because voting Democrat may not be working for Seattle. Eric Adams, the illustrious nightlife mayor of New York City. He loves to sample that product. Adam's filings contradict his claim he paid for foreign trips. Quote, my dime, my time, don't whine. End quote. The mayor said last year about south of the border travel as migrant surgeon to New York City. His latest financial disclosures so Columbia and a Mexican foundation footed much of the bill. This guy is one of the most conflicted individuals I have uh, ever done any kind of research on. Uh, any, he is just a highly conflicted individual. Back in October, Mayor Eric Adams made very clear that he was personally footing the bill for a trip to Mexico, Ecuador, and Colombia to take a boots-on-the-ground look at the tide of migrants flowing across the border and winding up in Gotham. Quote, the cost of this trip, I'm paying my own way, and you know my rule, my dime, my time, don't whine. End quote. He told reporters during his weekly media briefing on October 3rd, 2023. He repeated his claim about the payments the following week after returning from the trip. Quote, our entire team picked up their own cost, except for Kayla, who was dealing with media. Kayla, Kayla had to come down with, to deal with, you know, part of the role of the media. End quote, he said, about his deputy press secretary. Quote, but Tim Pearson paid his own way. I paid my own way. Ed Mermelstein paid his own way. You know, the team picked up their own costs. End quote. Financial disclosures released Monday by the City Conflict of Interest Board tell a more complicated tale. In fact, much of Eric Adams' October 2023 trip south of the border was paid for by a nonprofit and in part by the Colombian government. The mayor traveled to the countries in early October as part of a, quote, asylum seeker fact-finding mission, end quote, as New York City continues to see an influx of migrants coming to the city, which has not stopped. Eric Adams, that migrant influx has not stopped. The airfare accommodations and ground transportation for the first leg of this trip to Mexico City was paid for by the North Capital Forum, 
event put on by the U.S. Mexico Foundation, a nonprofit group run by U.S. and Mexican business leaders, according to the financial filings. While there, the mayor participated in the Empire State of Mind Local Leadership and Driving Prosperity and Cooperation Panel. It's a scam. And his security costs plus ground and air transportation during his visit to Colombia, where he saw the entrance to the Darien Gap but did not end up traveling there due to security concerns, was funded by that, gov- that's that country's government, the filing show. The air transportation spokesperson Fabian Levy clarified Monday was for a helicopter ride but not the flight to Colombia. Fabian Levy is a propaganda minister for him. Nothing he says is true. The guy's a total... Uh, 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 Fugazi, just like Eric Adams. Uh, if you ask me, it's just Fugazi Levy. That should be his real name. Both separately cost between $1,000 and $4,999. Asked by the city at a press conference Monday about who paid for the trips, including quoting the mayor from a previous briefing, uh, Fugazi Levy interjected to say the quote referred to the mayor's 2022 visit to Qatar. Adams proceeded to refer to completely Different trip to the annual Samas conference. Quote, I was in Puerto Rico on my time, my dime, Puerto Rico. End quote, he said. The mayor declined to clarify when asked following the briefing. In emails after the briefing, Fugazi Levy pointed out that Daily News had reported on the U.S.-Mexico Foundation paying for some part of the trip. In his view, this meant it was, quote, was made clear to the press the day we announced the trip, end quote, that the mayor's, quote, commercial flight to Mexico and his hotel were paid for by the sponsors of that leg of the trip, end quote. This guy is a highly, highly conflicted individual. Nothing he says. Eric Adams, on every issue, on anything you ask, is on both sides of the issue. Whatever you ask him, he's either going to be, he's for and against it at the same time. If you say, if you ask him about the migrants, he's going to say it's something that's going to destroy the city. But at the same time, they need to find work. And this is a, a, a city of togetherness or whatever else. What other other crazy things he always uh, murmurs out of his mouth? This guy, Fabian Levy, Fugazi Levy, is an absolute propagandist. I don't, don't even bother asking him for quotes. This guy would probably be right behind Eric and say, Eric, plop down. Just take a crap in my hand because that's the kind of guy he is. Or if Eric stops short, Fugazi Levy might have to to check because he might end up his rear end, if you know what I mean. That's the kind of guy you're dealing with with that that clown. So uh, this is absolutely disgraceful. You see what's going on here. These people have an interest in front of the city. This guy cannot tell you anything that's, you know, uh, true. Or, or or be uh, forthcoming with anything he says he's he's the I'm the mayor I'm the ex cop he's under federal investigations his campaign he's all kinds of chaos going around in this guy and that 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 leads you to what I've been saying the mayor of nightlife right campaign financial disclosures any kind of disclosure anything this guy does is under public scrutiny because he works for the city so then why who is footing the bill? For the nightlife, for his exuberant amount of times that he goes out. I'll just give you a few examples. In, in, uh, in one week, this man was out four times. Four. Okay? Now, on June 1st, with NYC descending into chaos, New York City Mayor Eric Adams had the time to party to the break of dawn in the Bronx last night at the old Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, now known as Salsa Con Fuego. Here he is smiling with this woman. And then look at this. Here he is with that, that big smile on his face. He's got this woman. I don't know. This dress is from Forever 21. Uh, Eric says he's a vegan. Here he is with a giant plate of chicken in front of him. I mean, who is paying for this stuff? Okay. Who's paying for this? Because I'll tell you right now. This is a horrendous look for a mayor who's just always out. And I, I got to clarify something here because this woman then went dark. She basically was public on Instagram and then she not public anymore right after th- this picture came out. Also, Salsa Con Fuego actually messaged me to say that they are sorry. They are uh, sorry of what happened to me personally. That they're on my side and that they have zero 
affiliation with one Jimmy Rodriguez, the former owner of uh, Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, or Jimmy's Bronx Cafe, and they haven't had any affiliations since 2013. So they actually went out of their way to, so that, to tell me that, which means they're not affiliated with Jimmy, which is one of Eric's uh, uh, best buddies. And I think they were taking, uh, you know, a, a blindside. They were taking a, a surprise that Eric Adams even showed up because when Eric Adams shows up, it's always, uh, you know, there's always a catch. There's always something to it. And then a couple of days later, here he is again, again. This is June 6th, nightly protests, migrant crime wave, no worries. Your favorite NYC mayor always has time to get wine dined and pocket lined. Who paid for this? Hashtag about last night. Hashtag city of favors. Hashtag party all the time. Here he is again. He's out with his crew. All right. He's pictured. He's smiling. He, look, here he is. They, this time he doesn't want to show you what he eat because he's a vegan having chicken apparently, and uh, you know that doesn't that doesn't mesh right. I mean, really, who is what is going on with this guy? Who is paying for this stuff? I mean, re- and then and then finally, June eighth, the mayor of nightlife Eric Adams was spotted getting wine dined and pocket lined at Top of the Rock in New York City, a very expensive restaurant in New York City, as the feds issue subpoenas and a grand jury investigation into his administration. Who is paying for all of this? Hashtag party all the time. And there he is, just in front of Top of the Rock like nothing. Like, hey, I'm the mayor. Are you kidding me? I'm Eric Adams. I'm the mayor. Mind you, the night prior, he had a huge event at his Gracie Mansion, where once again... He's talking about partying. He's talking about playing the music as loud as it could be because it was the uh, it was the uh, Puerto Rican Heritage event for at Gracie Mansion a few days prior to the Puerto Rican Day event. And here he is now. Now he's talking. New York City is the is the Puerto Rico of New York City. When he's in front of uh, a Jewish crowd, he'll say that it's uh, you know the Jerusalem of New York City. If he's in front of a Muslim crowd. He'll say it's the Turkey of New York City. If he's, you know, he's always, this is how he is. The guy's just a, you know, he's just that kind of a guy. But in one week, we have four places that he's at partying. We don't know who's paying for all this stuff. He's out there drinking. He's out there eating. This is very expensive stuff, by the way. And he's got a, a history of this kind of stuff. And as a New York City taxpayer, you have the right to know. What's going on with your mayor? And who's paying for this stuff? Because those campaign disclosure, campaign financial disclosures, that it doesn't ever reveal where he's having fundraisers, who's paying for what. And then when you find out anything, hey, I'm the mayor. What are you, what are you talking about? I'm the mayor. That's his excuse. By the way, he was under, that night they revealed in the Daily News, that is campaign, there is a grand jury uh proceeding going on with Eric Adams in regards to his campaign from 2021. And he proceeded to go party, I guess, because they announced that. So I don't know. That, that's just very, very strange. But that leads us to the final topic here on this show, at least for this show. And that's Conso Frito in the Bronx over there on Commerce Avenue, which we had a whole uh, uh, expose on not too long ago when I was here with Eric Dim. Now, you know that the owner of this place is uh, Richard Caban. We also know that uh, the aforementioned Jimmy Rodriguez Jr., the self-admitted criminal and mob associate, he used to run Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. He's owned a ton of places that always go into business and go out as quick as they were into business. He uh, down Coke all these different places. Well, he's the creative manager of this place, and uh, this place has been under so much scrutiny. The entire police department hangs out at this place, the upper echelon of it anyway. They've been pictured there for so long, fraternal organizations. God only knows what's going on there. You could take a look at a lawsuit by uh, Jermac Romero against the city of New York and NYPD. He's a former cop. He makes allegations that there's drugs going on there. There's, uh, uh, you know, we don't know about the meals or there's, there's uh, discounted meals, discount, there's prostitution, all kinds of stuff in his lawsuit. Yet there's no investigations. So I like to play this clip. It might be a little long. 
I was on the Stone Zone with Troy uh, Smith, and we discussed all of this. And here it is. You have uh, informed me about some epic corruption that's going on at a restaurant called Consa Frito in New York. I think that's important. We say the name of the restaurant. We get that out there um, because he's been Eric Adams has been associating with many known felons at this restaurant, hasn't he? Yes. Uh, not only Eric Adams, but the entire upper echelon of the police department. I'm talking about police commissioners, the chief of department, chief of patrol, uh, deputy commissioners. So and other underlings, but mostly the executive staff. This place, unbelievably, Troy, is owned by the police commissioner's brother, a retired uh, lieutenant. His name is Richard Caban. The current police commissioner, obviously, is Eddie Caban, who was part of the staff that terminated me, saying I was associated with someone who was reasonably believed to be engaged in or likely be engaged in criminal activity. So Richard Caban got this place. The creator manager of this place is a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Rodriguez Jr. Who's Jimmy Rodriguez Jr., you ask? Okay, well, I'll tell you right off the bat. He is the original owner of a place in the Bronx called Jimmy's Bronx Cafe. Okay, many years ago, this place was infamous for many incidents. Number one, there was uh, many shootings there. Number two, there was drug deals there. The drug dealers were indicted coming out of there. It was a 14 people were federally indicted coming out of Jimmy's Cafe. Number three, Major League Baseball banned their players from being at this place. This was all in the mid-90s. And one of the most infamous incidents was Jimmy Rodriguez welcomed Fidel Castro to Jimmy's Cafe. When, G uh, when Fidel Castro arrived in the mid-90s, while he was plucking chickens in a Harlem uh, hotel and got kicked out, the next night he was seen at Jimmy's Cafe against the orders of Rudy Giuliani, who did not want to see him in New York City at the time, and he was the mayor. So Jimmy also has a couple of things under his belt. Through sit-down news on YouTube, uh, John Panisi, he is a mob associate. John Panisi revealed that he is a mob associate. Jimmy is also a self-admitted criminal. In an article of The New Yorker, he uh spoke about his numerous arrests, and also he was arrested in the late 90s for running over his wife in front of Jimmy's Cafe. So he has a record, and he's been arrested. Therefore, he would fall under someone who's reasonably be believed to have engaged in or likely to have engaged in criminal activity. So he is the creator and manager of this place, Consofrito, but the liquor license and the ownership of the place is under Richard Caban. So now we're going to fast forward because now Jimmy's owned a bunch of places. I also like to add that he is a Democrat operative. How do we know this? When Jimmy's Cafe was going out of business, he owned a laundromat. When he owned this laundromat, now he knows Bill Clinton. He's been pictured with Bill Clinton. So when Hillary Clinton decided to run for state Senate, for the, the state, the Senate seat for New York, actually, she announced it in front of his laundromat. And how do we know this? There was a sticker on the door that said, anyone looking for uh, Jimmy Jimmy's Cafe to pay the bills, come to the laundromat. So Jimmy's intricately involved in the Democrat Party. Do not mistake that. So we're going to fast forward. He's owned many other restaurants. Don Coqui, Jimmy's Uptown, Jimmy's Downtown. So we fast forward to Conso Frito. So it's owned by Richard Caban. So when they, uh, the uh, Department of Building shows up, couple of years ago and gives them the liquor license there's this illegal party shed that they have and the party shed is like 50 by 100 feet it's like an extension on the building but it's illegal the buildings department deemed this illegal and said we're going to fine you but you must shut this down this is a public safety hazard but still hands them a liquor license the sla gave them a liquor license the department of building said this, this is illegal the fire department shows up troy they had 20 violations, the biggest one being that there has no fire suppression system, which means that party shed is a fire trap. So while they're, ha they're having these parties, Troy, they're having fundraisers for Assemblywoman Kareen Reyes, Darcel Clark, the, the, the district attorney of the Bronx, Letitia James, the attorney general is always there, Carl Hasty, the assembly leader of New York State, he's always there. Eric Adams is always there. 
Eddie Caban is always there. So you understand here, Troy, and the NYPD, numerous parties, numerous fraternal organizations having parties there, all under the guise of this place being a fire trap and a public safety hazard. Why was there no enforcement this entire tr uh, time, Troy? I still can't. I, I can't wrap my head around that. Well, and so my question to you would be, you know, we have, I mean, so the people who launched the case against you, I would assume that they would be, you know, the upper echelons of the New York Police Department. And there you have the, their leader in, uh, owning a club that is managed by a guy who's going around claiming he's a mob associate. Um, and so I think a lot of people in New York, a lot of people across the country are saying, well, who will deal with this? And what do you foresee here, Sal? Do you think that the federal authorities will have to step in to do this? Because it seems to me like they have the mayor. They, they seem to have ties to the governor's office. They have power everywhere in New York. This is going to have to come from outside of New York, some kind of enforcement. Yes, there needs to be a federal investigation to this. Troy, there's numerous allegations here beyond the fact that there's criminality, that they violated numerous court orders. They were ordered to tear the shed down. They didn't. They actually had a party that was sponsored by internal affairs of the NYPD. They then had that. They finally tore it down about a week ago. OK, and they had to pay fourteen thousand dollars in fines. They owed a water bill. They owed the landlord a ton of money. It was all kind of stipulations they agreed to. But here's the catch, Troy. After all of this, where they should have been held in contempt of court, they had another illegal party last weekend for the Puerto Rican Day Parade, the after party. And here's the catch. So the New York City Sheriff is Anthony Miranda, a former lieutenant that's very close friends with Eric Adams. So he's the New York City Sheriff. He's the only person that could seal this place for any kind of illegal de misdeeds, correct? So he's been recently sued by 27 plaintiffs for sealing uh, these cannabis stores, saying that they had their illegal weed shops, right, because of the Smoke Out Act in New York State. So he is pictured in Conso Frito, smiling with Jimmy Rodriguez as their legal liquor was being sold in the parking lot. There's a uh, hookah in the parking lot. They're once again violating a court order. There's no permit to sell alcohol out there. And uh, on top of this, there were cops. They were drinking on the job. The cops are still associating this place. We don't know if it's off limits, which is a place that would be deemed uh, a drug prone or criminal prone location, the NYPD. These questions have never been uh, asked to the NYPD. There's no answers for this. Why the NYPD continues to associate with this place. And this person, I, I could only, you know, surmise that it's because they believe they're above the law. So Anthony Miranda, I filed a complaint actually against Anthony Miranda as the New York City Sheriff. Why did he not shut down Conso Frito for selling alcohol illegally and have a cops drink there when he knows that they're not supposed to do that? But meanwhile, he's going to shut down a legitimate store for cannabis saying the smoke out act, but they don't, he doesn't have any judicial power to do that. He has to actually go through the steps. So this is another scandal that's unfolding underneath. Once again, New York city mayor Adams, who you could tell the one thing he's very good at Troy is partying. He parties all the time, whether he's hanging out with these, uh, women till four in the morning at Sasa con fuego at this other restaurant, Lincontro. Then he was at top of the rock. Then you see him at a fundraiser at Zero Bond. Who's paying for all this stuff, Troy? We just saw a campaign financial disclosure. You know, you know what you don't see on there? His fundraisers and who's paying for his stuff. He's still an employee of the city, and the taxpayers have the right to know. And once again, Troy, why is the police department associating with Jimmy Rodriguez, who's clearly falls under this rule that you can't associate with this guy, and they're all chummy chummy having parties, drinking in the parking lot. I mean, Troy, this is like unbelievable. And the, the allegations of, you know, there's prostitution allegations in a lawsuit. There's drug allegations in a lawsuit by this officer Romero. You can look at that lawsuit. Why is the police department continuing this behavior and the politicians? And why aren't the feds stepping in? Because they're the only entity that can, Troy. Well, and that's what that's what I'm worried about here, Sal. It's because, you know, you're, you're describing, you know, a place that, where Bill Clinton's, you know, hanging out with the guy that owns this place, and and you're describing a place that has ties with the attorney general and the governors. It's like New York as a whole. It seems to me the whole thing is built on corruption, and it goes from literally the top of the line to the bottom of the line. Yeah, it's it basically here, Troy. The entire 
apparatus of the Democrat Party, the majority of it, the powerhouse of it, they all hang out there. Stanley Schlein is a, is a is an attorney. He's a big donor to, for the uh, Democrat Party. He's behind all this stuff at Quinceafrito. You have this other guy, the Medina Group. They're also involved. You have he- high donors, big Democrats, all involved there. And there's one thing in common. These are all Trump haters. Look at the list. Richie Torres, he's a Trump hater. You know, someone should ask these, je- these uh, politicians and Eric, hey, Eric, there's allegations of prostitution and drug deals. What are you doing there? What is the police department doing there? What are your involvement with this place? And you know, Eric, Eric Adams is involved in, he goes to nightclubs all the time. We want to know who's paying for this stuff because that's a whole nother, that's the appearance of impropriety here, Troy, is enormous. You know, it's not like we could say you or I just walked in and had a meal at this place. It's the same group of cops, same group of politicians, all these different branches of government, plus the criminals, we have, you know, Jimmy is one, right? There's Fat Joe. I know you know who he is. He's a convicted criminal. He's a rapper. Peter Guns, Pistol Pete, the Terror Squad. I mean, there's also ties, you know, Pete Diddy, J-Lo, all these, Cardi B. They're all connected from this hip-hop game that Eric Adams thinks he's the hip-hop mayor. So they're all connected into this nightclub scene. And this is basically the clubhouse because there's all kinds of allegations flying out of this place, but nobody seems to want to A, write about it in the media, B, investigate it because you can't investigate yourselves. So you only ask for one final question here, Troy. When or are the feds going to investigate these ties and these allegations since they all can't investigate themselves? Well, and I would say, you know, we have a major trial coming up. Uh, and we, we just saw Letitia James, you know, uh, and we're going to see her a lot more. And I would say for the Trump legal team and for anybody that's trying to make the case against Letitia James, let's take a look at what she's up to. You know, we, we, you're, you make the point about Eric Adams and his, you know, fundraisers and things. Like, if she's attending these things, who's paying for her drinks? Who's paying for her to go out and be part of this Consafrito thing? There could be uh, someone pressuring her to prosecute Trump that maybe is part of the criminal underworld. It's a, it's a good question to ask considering we have the footage we have the photos we know this woman is associating with these people um it's a question that needs to be asked because there is a potential here sal that that this group of people uh embedded within this corruption uh the, this new york group is the are they're the ones that are coming after president trump they're the ones trying to prevent millions and, and tens of millions of people in the 2024 election from having a, a voice and having a choice uh, so, uh, you know, I just can't I can't say enough for what you've done, Sal, and for what you've been through, because I know it's been it's been hell for you because you've you've been persecuted for uh, basically nothing. I mean, nothing. And and meanwhile, these people, uh, they're allowed to associate with people that are 10 times worse than anybody that you ever associated with. And there's no accountability. We can only hope uh, that the feds are, are looking at this and they'll do the right thing and to bust up what it sounds like a major criminal scheme. Yeah, well, listen, Troy, Letitia James, this is an ethical problem. She has to be asked, Letitia James, as the attorney general, why are you associating with this individual and what are you doing at a place that has all these allegations? And she can see lawsuits, even though they're federal. So this Romero case, this Officer Romero, Jamak Romero, filed a lawsuit against the New York City Police Department in the city, right? And in there is allegations, prostitution, drug sales, uh, you know, the, the discounted meals. So what is she doing there? There's an officer. This guy was fired from the NYPD. He's a former officer. He's making these accusations. Is internal affairs looking into this? I don't think so because they're having parties there. Is Letitia James looking into this? She's pictured they're having a party. Is the district attorney of the Bronx looking into this? She's sitting there too having her parties. And if you think the governor, guess what? The lieutenant governor... Uh, uh, Delgado, the lieutenant governor of New York State, he's pictured with Jimmy Rodriguez too. So you can't look at every level of government in the state is connected to Conta Frito. So there's only one there's only one route here, Troy. The feds have to look into why all these people are always there. There's all these allegations and why everybody is just doing an about face, including this last party they had where the sheriff is smiling, staring while they're having illegal alcohol sales. I mean, Troy, there's also IRS implications here, tax implications here. We want to know about, we want to see financials. I mean, 
Are there the police department getting a discount? Because they're there an awful lot of times, awful lot of times. Why are they always there? Usually you would think, Troy, there'd be a rotation. Uh, cops would go to different restaurants. Diff- no, there, there was a stretch before we uncovered this that they were always there. You can look back, all the all the uh, fraternal organization parties, and we want, what are they paying? Because are they paying a full amount? Is there a discount? Because this guy had an illegal shed. I mean, this is all kinds of questions. that I don't understand how this has gone under the radar. But meanwhile, you want to pick on a guy like me and say, well, Sal Greco's a bad guy because his friend, we don't like him because that's Trump's guy. And basically, Troy, if I wasn't a Trump supporter, I wouldn't even be here. This all boils down to MAGA. They associated me. You're a MAGA guy. You're Roger's friend. You have to go. But hey, don't look at us because, Troy, the entire time is being investigated. The police commissioner, Shea, from 2019 to then Keyshawn Sewell and now Eddie Caban all the way till now, just the other day have all associated with this gentleman in this place and with these people, and they're pictured in that video there. Why are they allowed to do this? Where are these questions? Why won't the media hold these people responsible? This is a scandal. I mean, I can see this from a mile away. I was a cop, and I'm, I'm flabbergasted by nobody reacting to this. They just, oh, it's just business as usual in New York. And there you have it. There was a whole segment there. That got a ton of views and uh, a lot of comments and people just asking many, many questions about what's going on exactly with the New York City Police Department and uh, the illustrious nightlife mayor, along with everyone who's associated with this place, whether it's uh, Letitia James, the attorney general, the lieutenant governor there, uh, the Gatto of of New York State. You have Carl Hasty, the head of the New York State Assembly. What are they all doing? Darso Clark, the, the district attorney. It's just after, one after the other after the other. And here's this final uh, uh, thing that came up recently here. It was reported by the city. NYPD commissioner's brother demolishes illegal Bronx dining platform under judge's threat. Richard Caban scrambled to disassemble the outdoor structure at Conso Frito in the eve of a contempt of court hearing. The restaurant, which hosted an Eric Adams party last year, must still shut down by August 31st. As the moment neared to face a judge's wrath after weeks of stalling on a court order to remove an illegally constructed outdoor dining area at his Bronx restaurant, the brother of police commissioner Edward Caban jumped into action. La- late last week, Richard Caban backed down and demolished the vast platform at Conso Frito on the eve of a contempt of court hearing. In February, Caban had promised to remove the 161 seat enclosed structure by March 1st under a settlement approved by a civil court judge after the city buildings and fire departments had cited it for unsafe conditions and his landlord had filed suit to evict the restaurant from the premises. But Capon took down only the roof and walls and kept a sprawling platform in place, covering it with tables and chairs and continued to use it for weeks past the court-imposed deadline as a dining venue, according to his landlord. Quote, there's a serious question as to whether your client has violated the injunction. End quote. Bronx Supreme Court Justice Marissa Soto said to Caban's lawyer during a heated May 22nd hearing. Quote, I don't believe anything you are saying right now is going to validate their clear violation of this court's order. End quote. Soto then sent a contempt of court hearing for this past Monday. That afternoon, the city observed stacks of lumber piled up in the parking lots next to the restaurant. There was a party there not even a few days after this. It was an open air party and there was liquor, alcohol, you name it out there. Again, you're an establishment that only has an alcohol permit to be served inside the place. You're in violation of a court order if you have anything to do with anything going on outside because you already should have been held in contempt. Somehow the order, you know, they violate this stuff and the judge did not. I mean, they're basically violating everything. They're violating the law. By serving alcohol outside. There was some kind of event for an after party for the Puerto Rican Day Parade. You know, Fat Joe was there. Once again, it's, you know, Felony Hall there. All these people, uh, all these, you know, Fat Joe, Peter Guns, all these, they're all there again. And there's a police department. There's video of the police department outside the place, inside the place, drinking on the job, apparently. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. Then, New York City Sheriff Anthony Miranda, last seen partying at Conso Frito, was just sued 
in the Southern District of New York for sealing businesses without judicial oversight under the Smokeout Act. Miranda mysteriously has not sealed Conso Frito in the Bronx despite violating numerous court orders. Hashtag City of Favors. And here's his lawsuit. Okay? You guys can check it out yourself. I, I don't know what what exactly it, it, it is going on that, that somehow this place is allowed to um, continue in this manner. And it, this is something, like I stated, that only the federal government could step in because nobody can investigate themselves. This place clearly believes they're above the law. There is no law for them. The law only applies to you, the common man and woman out there that pays their taxes and is trying to do the right thing. For those that argue... Well, people just go there and eat. Well, it seems that there's an eclectic group of people, whether it be high-ranking officials in the police department, the police commissioner himself, the mayor, his staff, uh, every big shot in the state, whether it be an attorney, a well-known attorney, a funder of the Democrat Party, a uh, the attorney general, the lieutenant governor, the district attorney, they're all there. They're there a lot. There's a lot of pictures and videos there. And when you start to see that, once again, that's a red flag. Government officials partying with uh, known convicted criminals, mob associates, felons. These are the people that you say we should be, you know, monitoring. We can't make sure that, they, you know, these. but they're mingling with the with, with the politicians and cops and let me tell you something if you're a cop with a badge and you're doing this kind of stuff you're the worst kind of criminal you are a criminal don't make no mistake about it if you're mingling with these people constantly that would put you in that category has there been an internal affairs investigation from nypd i don't know it looks like they're only too busy worrying about who's a, a donald trump supporter so if you look this needs further scrutiny a further look it just doesn't stop it's just unbelievable how this has proceeded forward. Is anyone going to ever intervene that has any kind of authority to ask the major questions? What is the official stance on the New York City Police Department with Jimmy Rodriguez? You're, are you guys okay? Can a cop associate with this gentleman of any rank? Because apparently a cop can't associate with Roger Stone. That makes you like the scum of the earth. But if you're associating with a mob associate and a well-known criminal, self-admitted criminal that's, you know, got all kinds of allegations flying out of his place or a place that he quote unquote manages, that's OK. I guess that's fine because, hey, the police commissioner's brother is the owner. Don't you dare question them. NYPD Hispanic Society is honoring the nightlife mayor because he lets NYPD PC Eddie Caban allow his executives and underlings to openly and knowingly associate with criminals and felons while patronizing criminal-prone establishments, engaging in enabling criminality. Hashtag party all the time. Here it is. The NYPD Hispanic Society, Marina Del Rey. That's another place they all love to hang out in. And uh, they're honoring Eric Adams for I don't know what. I have no idea what this is about. Uh, apparently this is sold out. Nobody knows where the money goes. Nobody knows who's paying for what. Once again, it's another, you know, uh, it's a trail that leads to nowhere. We're just supposed to sit there and go, hey, everybody, everybody's great. Everything's fine. And don't ask any questions. But we, we know one thing there. Hispanic society, there's connections back to uh, police commissioner Eddie Caban, his right-hand man, the sergeant, Dennis Rodriguez. He's one of the guys running that. They're constantly pictured and seen at Conso Frito. And, uh, you know, if you're seen there and you're always there, then Eric Adams is clearly turning a blind eye to everything because he's in there mingling with everybody himself. So that society, I would say the very, very top of it, why are they honoring Eric Adams? Who, by the way, the other day endorsed for assembly, the 40th district of, of New York State, Ron Kim, who's the current assemblyman, who, one, wanted to defund the police, two, is a co-sponsor of the bail reform bill. He's the co-sponsor of that bill that cops have so many problems with, okay? And the guy who's actually running against them, 
Yi Andy Chen in that district who has been endorsed by the NYPD PBA and now the Suffolk County PBA and all the cops love him. Eric Adams endorsed his opponent. So Eric Adams is actually endorsing the guy that hates his police department. So in turn, be a conflict, no? Much, much to come in the future with Eric Adams and everything else in New York City. It's a mess, but it's a mess because of who's in charge. It's always going to fall on those, uh, on those shoulders. And with that, folks, this is uh, another edition of the Sal Greco Show. Tune in soon. I'll have another episode up. While you're at it, hit the like, subscribe Share this, hit those buttons, share, share this all over social media. Also on Rumble, hit the Rumble button. Go on Spotify, go on Apple Music, go on all, all those other platforms. Check this out. You can hear this and watch this over and over again. And ask the questions that you should be asking. And try to answer them yourself and say, is anything that Sal is saying any sense? Because I'm just here trying to spread the truth. And we'll be back. And I'll see you soon.